Hello, this is Walt Smith on Blooming Rising TV, back for another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. So, without further ado, hey, let's have a look at some of those comments. So, this week we're going to start off with something a little bit different, I feel. We're actually going to take an article from a daily newspaper. A fella by the name of Ray Onsbro has written an article. Now, within it, he says, What has happened to all the money City owe? Written off by the mega-rich owner, presumably. Proper clubs. <laughs> Sorry, like Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester United have to live in the real world and pay their own way. <laughs> I've seen better articles written on public toilet walls. He's actually written this in the great news that City have become self-sufficient. Our friend Ray better get used to the idea of City being at the top, because they're going to be there for a while longer, Ray. Eh? In the article, he actually questions the Etihad deal. Now, I feel the Etihad deal was, well, a little bit undervalued, if anything, and it passed FFP scrutiny, which, believe me, had David Gill like a rabid dog all over it. This self-confessed man, Ray, must never have actually been round the Etihad Stadium before Sheikh Mansour started pumping all the money in. Sheikh Mansour has not only uh, transformed Manchester City, he's actually transformed that whole area of Manchester. And that's only the beginning. How dare Manchester City actually offer young folks round there a chance of a trade and a job while the academy was being built. How dare Sheikh Mansour actually build a beautiful school to raise aspiration amongst the youth in that area. Ray Ansbro actually to me comes over more bitter than, well, an ugly sister in a Cinderella fairy tale. Nowhere did he actually mention the fact that City have dedicated loads of time to the women's game. He's not actually compared City's owners to that lot in Trafford. Why? Because they're bleeding United dry year in and year out. I often wonder if articles like this were actually written in crayon with a big red tinfoil hat on. Do I care if a bitter red journalist actually cares if we're self-sufficient or not? No. The only worrying thing about this for me was that National Daily Newspaper actually decided to let him have his red sycophantic rant. Poor Ray is so upset that his little world has moved on. Maybe he should grow up or perhaps, well, seek counselling. To actually suggest that our youth academy, which was open last year, hasn't produced a first team player, just shows you the level that some people will actually stoop to. They actually smashed United's youth system this year. I feel that Ray would probably like us to play our under 12s next week, but it ain't happening. What a fool. Ellie Warren. City will go downhill with Aguero and Silver injured. Two man squad. <laughs> This is the kind of nonsense that some football fans like to think. If they repeat it often enough, it must be true. Let's get this right. There isn't a team in England or Europe that would actually not miss Aguero and Silva as part of their team. They are intrinsic to the way that Manchester City play. But, Ellie, let's look at the stupidity of your comment by looking at, what well, the evidence. Yaya Torre could become the first man ever to actually win the African Footballer of the Year five times on the row. Fernandinho. Plays in the middle of the park for a team called Brazil. They're not bad. Phony. He actually won the African Cup of Nations this year. Zabletta has actually played in World Cup finals and is a true warrior. Company is actually the captain of the world's best international team at the moment. Kevin De Bruyne. He's also in that team. And at 50 odd million, he looks a bargain. Otamende. He was actually in the La Liga team of the year last year. And, well, he had competition from Barcelona and Real Madrid players. And Joe Hart the best English goalkeeper of this generation. I could go on, Ellie, but they cut me off. And plus, I want to get stuck into some of this. Last year, everyone said we were a one-man team. This year, we're a two-man team. Next year, 11-man team, possibly. Kevin Toomey. I think this comment could have been put here because it's so stupid, just so I would read it. Cheers, Kevin. Bournemouth have a good chance to beat us in Manchester tomorrow. <laughs> For me, Bournemouth was the perfect game to come back after the international break. They are one of the weaker teams in the Premiership and plus we were at home, which I think is vitally important with the busy schedule coming up. Three points in the bag, top of the league, scoring five goals, should have been six. That offside, <sighs> Boney, who actually had malaria this summer apparently, banged a couple of goals in as well. That will do him the world of good and could be brilliant for us Blues. Kevin De Bruyne actually showed for the first time since we signed David Silva that we've actually got an adequate replacement for him when he's injured. I thought the defence had a good workout and actually looked more sturdy. And Otamende, for me, is starting to shine and show us the player that he can be. And as for Raheem Sterling, he looks a world beater. He got me right out of my seat. And I did love the way some ex-scout Liverpool players actually were coming out on Twitter. <clears throat> Jason McAteer. And we're actually trying to have a pop at this guy. 
That just shows you how good he is and how much it's getting under their skin. And this is on a day that Liverpool actually didn't manage to score a Premiership goal. So Jason McAteer, put that in your pipe and smoke it. So that about sums up another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a like below. And if you've got a prediction for the derby, hey, leave that below. I know what I'm thinking. Oh, it's time for another. <laughs> Just laughing at Andrew Cole. Because I can. <laughs>